Hi there, and welcome to this video, Five Steps to Overcoming Overwhelm. My name is Sherry Rothwell, and I'm excited to share with you this system for getting out of that space where you feel totally overwhelmed with everything that you have on your plate and feeling like you don't know where to start, what to prioritize, or just overall feeling super tired and uninspired to do the work. So before we get into the five steps, I just want to get clarity about what overwhelm actually is. So the key to getting out of overwhelm is first of all to understand that all overwhelm is, is resistance. It's resisting what you need to do. Now, that's all fine and dandy to have that insight, but the question then becomes, how can we turn it into something positive that we can uh, use, have a mindset about resist, um, overwhelm and resistance so that we can turn it around and utilize it to move ourselves forward. So if overwhelm is resistance, then the question becomes, what is resistance? So here's a positive context for you to go into in your mind when you make the connection between overwhelm being resistance. That resistance is simply a call to restructure. Okay. So if that's all resistance is, that's something totally possible, isn't it? It's not depressing. It's not um, disempowering. And it is actually a relief in a sense to recognize that the feeling that's coming up of resistance and the feeling of overwhelm is a call to restructure. So it's actually there for a purpose. It's there to show you that something is out of alignment and all you need to do is get back into proper alignment and everything will come back into flow. The inspiration will come back and then you can move forward with that resistance. So I love looking at um, overwhelm from that perspective because it allows me to now be able to take the five steps that I'm going to share with you because of the mindset shift, right? There's when you're in overwhelm, you often feel like a victim and when, and you feel like everything's out of control and it's out of your hands and uh, you can't get back on track and all these different thoughts will go through your head when you feel overwhelmed. But when you turn it into a call to restructure, then you feel powerful to get realigned. So it's essential to understand what it actually is and that it's serving a purpose. And it's there to basically save you from pushing forward in the wrong direction. So there we go. Overwhelm and resistance are awesome. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the first step to getting out of overwhelm. So if you're going to restructure what you're doing, then you have to create a, a clear space moving forward to create something new. So the first step is to declutter. So whether that is decluttering your space that you're working in, or it's decluttering papers that you've collected around the uh, topic that you're working on or the... Um, whatever it is that you're working on. I mean, this could apply to anything. This could apply to cleaning your house. Like, who knows what it is that you're feeling overwhelmed and resistance around. But all you need to do to get started is to clear the space. So it doesn't just clear the space physically around you to, you know, be able to move in your space, but clearing the feelings that you have around moving forward. So some of that may be, emotional releasing. It may mean stepping out of your environment and clearing your head by taking a walk, but then coming into the space that you're going to be working in and create a fresh slate moving forward. So if your desk, for example, is untidy, it's, and you're already in a state of resistance and overwhelm, it's not going to be that exciting and motivating or inspiring to work in that space. So you're going to want to start by clearing, cluttering, cleaning. Okay. The next thing is to decide on one to three goals around the thing that you're working on that you feel you can accomplish in 90 days or less. Okay. Now the thing that you feel resistance about might be something that, you know, you need to get done tomorrow. So obviously you're not going to give yourself 90 days, 
but there's probably a lot of things that you're looking at in the context of your bigger vision for your life. And so from that perspective, it may feel overwhelming, like when can I ever even get to this because it's such a big thing. So we don't want to focus on a million things that you need to do. We only want to focus on the ones you prioritize. So around this thing that you feel overwhelmed, what is the one to three things that you want to prioritize accomplishing? So get out a piece of paper and write those three things down. And make sure that they are something you can accomplish in 90 days or less. That's really important because anything beyond 90 days, um, research has shown that people just can't stick to any longer than that. So don't set yourself up for failure by writing down a million things that you're going to accomplish in the next six months or a year. There's nothing wrong with doing exercises like that where you are doing big visioning, but this is about getting out of overwhelm and getting things accomplished. So the next thing is to create a project folder for this particular thing that you feel overwhelmed about. So inside this folder, you're going to put in things like um, articles that would support you to accomplish that thing, inspiration, um, anything that you're working on, documents you're creating around it, um, to accomplish lists, right? All the things that you in overall would like to accomplish in that. So now it's not in your head anymore, swimming around overwhelming you, but it's like, okay, here it is in my project folder. And there's, yes, a gazillion things that I feel like I need to do, but I've chosen three, one to three, and that's what I'm going to accomplish before I then come back to this exercise and pick one to three more that I'm going to focus on. And for sure that to accomplish list is excellent for getting all of the stuff out of your head and onto paper so that you don't have to every time you go to work on your bigger goal keep coming back to the question of what am i supposed to be doing here what are all the things that i need to accomplish so it just streamlines that for you so you're not always feeling like you're coming back to square one okay now there's something that is really essential here for you to now be able to accomplish those one to three goals and that is having a rhythm in every day where there are certain tasks that you accomplish in a rhythmic way. So you can rely on yourself to do it every day. So then you're gonna ask yourself, what am I going to do in a rhythmic fashion every single day, the top three to five tasks that if I put, if I actually did those every day, would be the most effective to bring me towards my goal. Okay, so for me, one of my rhythms is to um, well, actually, I'll tell you more. Um, the, the two things that I do every single day without fail are to get up in the morning, look at my day timer, look at what I need to accomplish, look at what I had intended to accomplish but never did the day before, and then restructure how I see myself accomplishing these tasks. So I put them in my day timer. Um, in different spots and I always use pencil because things change right you can't control things and so we may think we're gonna do one thing on one day and then something comes up and we don't or we thought it was gonna take us two hours it took us four hours so then we had to you know put it into the next day so um, I always do everything in pencil and that makes it easier for me I also put check mark boxes beside everything and that allows me actually to have a set, sense of satisfaction because I love checking boxes. <laughs> and actually, it's really funny because this year I bought a day timer that has checkmark boxes already in it. And it's so funny because because I've always done the checkmark boxes, I end up writing another checkmark box beside the other checkmark box. Silly. Um, anyways, so once you have those essential tasks, then you'll do them every single day and that will get you closer to your goals as a rhythm so it becomes a habit. So the first thing I do is do that, go into the day timer, restructure how I imagine that I'm going to or envision how I'm going to accomplish what's most important. Then the next thing I do is mindset work. So every single day I spend time looking at um, inspiring um, like quotes or um, books or things, reading books, and taking notes on books that have inspiring um, concepts in them to keep me focused in a positive direction. Okay. Then the next thing that should be part of my rhythm, but isn't always, but I'm very clear what I need to be doing. <laughs> and you may find that with yourself too. Like you'll do this exercise and you'll go, okay, the most effective things that I can do 
in my business are these three to five tasks and you may find some easier than others. Okay. So it may be harder for you to do the mindset work. Um, and easier to do something else. So the, the next thing that would be essential for me, and this is likely for you in, in your business as well, is to every single day step into the day asking yourself, how can I make some sort of offer to a potential client? So essentially that would look like looking for ways to connect either through um, doing an email or uh, posting something on Facebook with an offer in it, doing a video or a live stream. Obviously, if I were to actually commit to doing that every single day, there would be exponential results over time because how many more videos would there be out there in the world where people could find me? Um, how many more times would people on my list get a feeling and connection um, uh, and uh, feel like they've been served by me? that doesn't always pay off in the immediate sense, like you know, you send an email to your list or you do a video and instantly you get a client, but over time these things do turn into a larger list, bigger following, and eventually also clients. And sometimes it can be really fast. You might just feel inspired and put something out there and then somebody contacts you to be a client and have a conversation with you. So those would be the top three things that I focus on in my day to make sure that I'm doing the most effective things. So essentially it's organizing my time, doing the mindset work and taking an action in my business that actually leads to a, an offer of some sort. And you may have other things that you add to your list that you know are gonna be the most effective for you. Those are the three that I suggest. Um, moving forward that literally those are the most life-changing and business changing things that you can do in your um, in your in your business and then of course that affects your life moving forward and opens up opportunities and doors for you um, so I pretty much said number five already but it's creating a rhythm around it so that it happens in a certain sequence and you feel nourished and nurtured by it. So for me, it's the um, organizing my day timer and then doing the mindset work and then working on my business, okay? So um, how it's fun for me is I you know, make my coffee and I light a candle and I just do it. And I feel compelled to do it every single day. Um, and like I said, the, the first two, <laughs> I feel compelled to do every single day. Um, less so uh, where I find resistance is around the part of actually like making an offer, right? Because um, we're, I think we're all different, you know, uh, have different things that we naturally are geared to and I love to create. So sometimes I uh, make the mistake of prioritizing creating before I prioritizing getting out there and connecting with people, okay? so. Um, because if you just spend all your time creating, then when you go to actually share it with people, then who are you going to share it with unless you actually do the work of daily making offers to your uh, list and your people that follow you. And so the rhythm is really important so that you have a consistency around this. Okay. And this, just doing these things will keep you out of overwhelm, essentially. Okay. Um, and then I'll just give you one more bonus tip before we end the video and that is to keep organized around the tasks that you have to accomplish. Just put a little bit, um, write the time beside the task in your day timer so that you don't end up putting too many things in your day timer and then feeling disappointed that you weren't able to accomplish those things. Um, I find that also helps on the level of telling your subconscious mind that this is only gonna take this long. Um, because sometimes you may have noticed that if you give yourself too much time to do something, it will actually fill up that time. So you want to, you know, stick things in little time slots and, you know, make a decision about here's how much I want to spend time-wise on this aspect of my business. And then the more you are clear around that intention, the more likely that it's going to work for you to get it done in that time. So those are five steps for getting out of overwhelm. And remember, overwhelm is nothing but a call to restructure whatever it is that's ahead of you so that you can get back into alignment with getting it accomplished so that you can stay in flow and uh, do it from a place of pleasure 
um, rather than pushing. Bye for now.